Hello, people. And we are back on mini proposal workshop. And today we are testing template uh, stakeholder network, uh, which is a chapter five template. And yeah, we're probably going to make three templates today, chapter five, six, and seven. And then we will continue these templates uh, with the last chapters another time. But let's cut straight into the template introduction. So chapter five, stakeholder network. Uh, here we want to know what who are the stakeholders uh, of the proposals and how the stakeholders benefit from this proposal. Once we have ideated on the uh, um, the stakeholders and their benefits, uh, we will go into which stakeholder this proposal will engage the most. So we have the, like the highest um, engaged stakeholder to, to understood and would give a reason why will you engage with this the most. And why we have this kind of uh, template is because you always want to kind of have an orientation and understanding where does your proposal position um, among all the possible people who could be related to that. And if you do bring it out specifically in proposals or at least mention it, uh, uh, who does it benefit, it gives a um, better understanding for the both assessors and voters um, what kind of impact this proposal and who, who does get the benefits. So any questions about this task? No, let's go. Let's go. So who are our stakeholders in our case? I'm gonna just copy paste this here to closer. As we are for a reminder, our problem is less than half of the funded proposals do not finish based on proposal roadmap. And we set out to create an educational resources and coordinate workshops to help proposers to write well planned proposals. The first obvious uh, stakeholder are proposers. And here are a couple of examples I already brought here. And I actually would say even the vote we, we, we address voters too. And in our case, the catalyst community, uh, we have like on like examples of uh, stakeholders, so organization or company. Can it be a stakeholder in this proposal? Mm. Mm. I, I will say the proposals technically are, well, not always, but I will say they are proposers also. The Catalyst community in our case is a, is a voter. And uh, here I have a, copy of the same thing, a specific community in wider world. So who could we else benefit uh, in our in our work? Mm, I, th I think also those who who uh, study our material and watch the, watch the videos. So would I would they be proposers? Uh, they might. Uh, for uh, yeah, people who use resources for study in, in inspiration, I guess and insight 
Mm-hmm. And they could be proposers, but okay. So would would we say that like other educators could look at our material and perhaps see value in one of the workshop, uh, one of the templates, perhaps, and then use it their own education. You mean something like that too? Yeah, sure. They will look at the whole mirror board and look at this framework and see, wow, this this is well thought out. Yeah, other educators. So yeah, that's a totally new area, which doesn't even cover here. <clears throat> In a case of a catalyst community, I would maybe perhaps say assessors too. Uh, and in a way that uh, they look at this, okay, this cutters community is a quite a huge range of stuff, people. And basically, they could use these templates to see, okay, there is a question, who are stakeholders? And now, when they are looking at somebody else's proposal, they could look at it with an idea, of, okay, does this proposal I'm reading, does it have stakeholders? And should it have? But at least then think about it, like, is it address? And then they are able to actually help the other proposers by just asking test questions from their own proposal. Like, hey, I noticed you are missing, for example, a map of stakeholders or something else from previous chapters like KPIs or, and then use that workshop template to know what questions a proposal might want to answer and if they do that i guess it, it i guess it's a little bit the same thing as educators as assessors now well, they may not be in the same thing but there are some of the educators probably are assessors too just a slight slight connection here all right. Uh, who and now how the stakeholders benefit? So, how does proposer or a company benefit from this proposal? I guess we said that in the solution already. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> perhaps like giving a vision of uh, how hard is a proposal, like giving a vision how how much time it takes to make a proposal. Time and effort. Take to write uh, Good proposal. I guess a good is a perspective, but still. And <clears throat> I guess it also increases the feasibility. Uh, but like when you have so many details from all kinds of different areas about your proposal, it increases your. Uh, likelihood and visibility to actually get funded. Yep. And they also might see the areas that their proposal is lacking currently. Then we have people who use resources for inspiration and insight. Um, but yeah, they're basically all the same information for um, I guess the catalyst community is a bit high level uh, voters what benefit they do get from these pro these templates these educations I guess actually we don't really add, they are not that big of a stakeholder. In a sense, they 
this is more like um, uh, in a circular economy that for the voters, they if they know that the person has used these templates, then it it gives more credibility that uh, the proposal right there know they, they they are have like the more <laughs> oh, yeah. again like it comes down to like a feasibility that the proposal knows what he's going to propose and like he knows his stuff or how to pull it off and increases the um, like understanding that these proposers are more qualified in a sense but that at least or the they have run through some uh, program, but it's not the direct like uh, improvement, I guess. I mean, I don't even know how to kind of word it properly. But technically, voters can use the templates to also assess: so is it is it good? Like, okay, I, I'm checking this template, and now I'm the, whatever proposal I'm reading, and they are missing it, so I'm not gonna vote for it because it's. It feels like it's missing pieces. Yeah. Uh, but probably voters are not don't have that time for that. Mm -hmm. And how oh, it benefits other who could find value to incorporate with their own work. Ah, yeah. Other educators are the stakeholders. And the reason is um, they could find value to incorporate with their own work. <clears throat> so any other stakeholder who comes up in mind who would be in touch with the proposals? Who are we? Mm. I guess we are other educators. <laughs> Nothing really comes to mind at the moment. Same. All right. Which stakeholder this proposal will engage the most? From <clears throat> yeah, now the question is how large do we want to go? Do we want to go specific to the proposers, create educational resources and garden workshop to help proposers? Yeah, we are even saying it <laughs> quite clearly in the solution. So I guess we go with that. Although we could take the yeah. catalyst community because what we are targeting, like catalyst audience, however, I I, I already see that this kind of templates and workshops could be used any, anywhere, even in a business environment. Like, hey, you have a problem you need to solve. You know, there is a new business integration you need to do with another company. And your problem is like how to do it. And now you basically, okay, this is a solution. You ideate on different solution options. And then you're gonna go like, okay, who who we are gonna do with this? Um, well, how do we define the success? Um, Maybe like the title or that stuff in like internal business you don't really need, but there are chapters which could be which still has the questions which will get you down to actually solving the problem. Um. So yeah, but let's let's target for proposals for now, unless you have other thoughts. Nope, I agree. And why will you engage them the most? Because our problem is uh, proposals don't get funded, <laughs> basically. It's funny that our yeah. reason is actually the problem statement. Maybe, maybe that should be the case. Yeah, but no, no, no. It's actually, it's slightly different. Yeah. Because our problem statement is targeting catalyst proposals and and their execution, but our stakeholder 
as a proposer it don't have to be a catalyst community proposer it's just then whoever wants to propose a problem with a solution and the plan uh, so because pro we target proposers because they are source of innovation maybe better because they are source of innovation role who plan the roadmap for solving the problem does that make sense mm, the second sentence is weird because of the road like the idea is like when you write the proposal uh, in the proposal you basically plan and explain bigger uh, uh, okay maybe because they're a source of innovation, they explain, oh no, they explain what are current issues and how to solve them and how much it costs. <laughs> Because like, to, to me, they are like the starting point of, uh, and if that is done well, then the rest of them is going to be easier. <coughs> Does it make sense now? <laughs> or still? <laughs> um, yeah, it's fine. But they don't only explain the issues, but they also, yeah, okay. Yeah, you pointed out the innovation too. Okay. So let's leave it at that. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and we completed uh, chapter five, stakeholder network. So we ideated on the stakeholders. So we had like proposers, uh, assessors, voters, other educators who are tied between uh, in the larger groups and smaller groups. We um, ideated on uh, the benefits all of these um, roles and stakeholders will get from having this proposal. For example, spending less time choosing for what information proposal should include, or they could find value to incorporate uh, with their own work. Work So other educators, when they look at this, oh, interesting. I didn't think about this question. And then they can include it into their work for, um, flow. And then finally, we ideated on, OK, who should be the main target? It was an easy case in our uh, because we, we already in the solution statement, we, we are targeting proposers. And why pro we chose proposers? Because they are the source of innovation. They explain what are current issues, how to solve them, and how much it costs. So uh, basically, all the problems start from here if the proposal is not uh, well made. And the proposers are basically the people who write the proposals. With this chapter five is concluded. I think it took us 20 minutes. I didn't actually note our starting time. Yeah, something like that. Right, let's jump to chapter six. I'm gonna maybe have to make a place for all. <laughs> this stuff all the time so it's always somewhere visible what are we doing so <clears throat> in chapter six defining success we are going to look into what are proposal outputs and am i, am I sharing screen I am, <laughs> of course. Uh, in chapter six, defining success, we're going to look into what are proposal outputs and uh, outcomes. 
And once we have ideas on those, then we address what does the success uh, for this project will look like. So basically, once we realize okay, what do we produce, we will uh, basically make a metric of uh, how, of these outcomes, what what needs to happen basically in, in order for this to be successful and and what are our expectations and then we look at what are the main risks that could prevent uh, you from delivering the project successfully so making sure that um, you know, that all the like when we have an outcome like is there could there be a like a downside of uh, of or some blockers which will not help us to get the required outcome or output and then we have a small ideation place. How do we mitigate all of these risks we come up with? And then we can also check in if we want to use the sustainable development calls, which is an European, maybe it's a global, I'm not actually sure, uh, of way of, like the yeah, global problems or what we are tackling. And there's a tool for that we could uh, use uh, to select these uh, bigger goals and which we are addressing. And then we also describe uh, how our proposal solution will address the challenge that we are going to submit in. In our current case, we and the challenges in Project Catalyst um, are out there. Um, and we may actually not have a place to, to put this proposal. So in in this current situation, we're going to skip it. But it's definitely important factor if you're proposing in Project Catalyst. What are proposal outputs and out outcomes? Proposal outputs and outcomes. Well, the proposal output are educational videos and educational resources. Um, I guess educational resources is the big level and, and then we can say these are videos, uh, model of our templates, um some ex uh some cool yeah tools to help um uh, improve the proposal I guess and then these tools are Excel templates, Excel template. Currently, we have only one, and that this comes with the the last uh, cost delivery stuff. Um, what else we do? How we do workshops? So we also have, yeah. educational live workshops, which also lead to videos, <laughs> because we can uh, record them and share with people. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, tools to track the progress of the proposals we have to make, or, you know. Yeah, um, so. To track the success. Uh, outcome outcome is so we yeah I, I guess the tools to track the outcome is not perhaps the right thing but we do track them so what is the output of a tracking uh, insight how well proposals are doing 
because one thing, this is just one part of what we're doing, but all, all our activity is actually open source. So technically they have uh, uh, outcome, outcome is open source project management event Myrobor, <laughs> which is not related to perhaps proposal, but it just gives an inspiration what's happening. Mm -hmm. And outcome is also that we are empowering proposals and and inspiring, hopefully. Mm. Are those two points different or similar? Yeah. I guess I always thought they are different, but then there are actually reasons <laughs> why they are. You could Google it, what's the difference? But empowering is um, is giving basically access to these resources and that empowers people to do what they do, do it better. And inspiring is um, actually getting them to do something. So they may have the tools, but they don't may have the idea or the will to make it. So it, this gives the will and this gives the tools. Okay, okay. I get it. So what does success for this project look like? Well, in our case, when we create this and we are targeting project catalysts, so uh, fund ten project catalyst. Uh, yeah, fund ten Katana project catalyst proposals uh, are able. Mm, now, do, do we want to make it simple for us in a way that all the proposals who go through these kinds of resources, that they get like 80% uh, executed on time? Or we want to kind of levy it up and say that all the proposals, even the ones who don't really use it, the, that they should be like, that they should be finished on time, even though we may not never look at what we are doing. So we don't really have a power over that outcome, but this is what do we see as a success? Hmm. I think it would make sense to target only those that we work with. Do we want to make 80% or all of them finish on time? So we are basically we fail if one proposal doesn't make it out of 10 <laughs> or we. Hmm. I don't remember what our goal was. This is, this is, we are defining it right now. But according to our proposal. Mm, this is the proposal. We, our solution is a great educational resources. Our problem is less than half of funded proposals do not finish based on proposal note map. We are successful if because yeah, this this is the point where we're actually defining the goal of this proposal we are writing right now. Hmm. In our current proposal, we are just saying that we all the people who used our mini proposal workshops 
we want them to get good assessor score. But this actually may not be a case in Pantene. We, we may not even have an assessment stage. Who knows? There is a cool AI, what I want to show you later, which pretty much just writes assessments. <laughs> Hmm. The, the and the best case is that they get funded. Yeah, but this is is this that our target that they should get because we even help these projects who have probably less likelihood of getting funded because they are maybe only impact oriented and doesn't have a business plan, and there are so many other options there, but. Okay, so two proposers who helped in fund 10 Canada projects and got funded. Okay, and then we'll just let's say we are successful if two proposer who help, we helped in fund 10 and got funded um, are delivering proposals on time. <laughs> and they finish they finish the proposal. <laughs> and finish proposal sometime. Looks good to me. Yep. What are the main risks that could prevent you from delivering the project successfully. <laughs> I will say. Okay, what is the main risk uh, educational live workshops? What are the risks here? Because I think that live workshop is a, is a one good place where we can describe entire how to use these templates and all that shenanigan we're pulling here. Uh, people find the templates overwhelming. And how do we meet? Okay, let's just yeah brainstorm all the issues we ha we have these proposals and the, all the risks and issues basically. Mm, Miro board board is is a new tool or mini and hard to use. At the start, it has like a learning term. Maybe that the information is outdated or is not according to the uh, challenge challenge settings or something. Information is out. Yeah, In regarding information is outdated. How can, because I'm wondering, can this information be out, outdated? Like, in, in how does it get to outdate? Who are stakeholders? Oh, okay, so I don't know. It's because I don't think the issue is actually being outdated because you can't really answer that you can answer not so good questions, but it's it's still it's still a question and it still gives you the thought process. But what it can it can be have a missing it can miss questions or valid points and questions you might need to idea on specific projects 
so let's say you are doing some chemical compounding and you want to make a, a, some healthy drug, then probably you would have to ask or prove some specific areas which we didn't even think about. It's more, it has been quite a general framework in some sense. But like, a, like what is your chemical compound, I don't know, values that, <laughs> yeah, that, that need to be matching with some kind of world standard or some country standards and, and kind of have to go through that. And I don't even know how to ask that question from here in a general form. And you said something else too. What was that? I think that was a valid point. Two you things. mean about the challenges? Ah, yes. Mm. The proposal doesn't fit under the challenge requirements. Yeah, yeah, and that's actually quite a huge risk in because now we have um, changed the approach, not doing uh, challenge first approach but hey what's what is the problem you're actually working on let's let's just flesh out the idea and now is the actually the stage okay you have this idea but how do you fit it into the actual challenge and it's so yeah it's, it's a bit different approach and it, it can be totally do that it doesn't fit and this is our, in our case, this is like actually the biggest risk here. But if we, if we, yeah, we can later look at the, the success because technically this doesn't really, this is not really an issue for our success. Because then if it doesn't fit to the correct challenge, you probably won't get funded. If you don't get funded, then it doesn't go to the level. So. So our problem would be, okay, the proposal did get funded. So it means he was in the right challenge. Uh, but it, so what are the risks once they get funded and they get the resources? Um, overestimating uh, teams' capabilities perhaps? Wow, you went deeper. Okay, but no, 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 no. Yeah, you're right. I went way too deep because <laughs> uh, it's still about our proposal. What doesn't yeah. make and yeah, I'm gonna still gonna keep it there, but I'm gonna white it white. Uh, But but yeah, it's, it's, it's not the risk is that we are not in control of the proposal. We just help them to ideate on that, get it funded. But our success depends how well they are doing. So yep. Well, but this that, that well, the, it's not really a risk <laughs> technically. Well, maybe it is. Well, it's a risk for it having a, risk. a successful. <laughs> it is also a risk if no one joins the workshops. Yes, that was. But okay, I um yeah, I'm not sure is that the risk itself. I think why they didn't join a workshop is a risk. I'm just gonna still gonna write it out. Oh, 
uses our material. But what I brought out that people find templates overwhelming. Mirrorboard is complicated. Hmm. So these are like two reasons why they may not join or use our materials. Or maybe we don't do enough marketing. Yeah, that's that's a very good one. I think that's the best one yet. Uh, I wonder, can we have the, like, uh, I don't know what's the antonym for inspiring, assuming antonym is the vice versa version, <laughs> uh, opposite version, that people are looking at it like, oh, so much info i need to know so much to make a proposal and then we just dis disempower <laughs> maybe you mean discourage uh, yeah i think we we have a plenty a valley of plenty oh okay how will you mitigate each risk so we do not uh, have enough marketing in correct channels so how do we mitigate it I'm going to use a different color here. Mm. Put pressure on Kowe. <laughs> mm. I find, um, because it, it's our find process it. iterative uh, in, in a sense that we're going to launch it we say hey in this date and time come here and let's let's have a fun and if nobody joins up then we try different channels we and platforms maybe twitter or or facebook or something and target like educational channels uh, so uh have and it the uh, process to okay have multiple sessions. Five sessions <laughs> and then Try marketing on different uh, platforms. Um, and we can think some examples here, like yeah, Twitter, Facebook, maybe even Reddit. Uh, and perhaps even we could go straight to the IOG and say, I mean, news, uh, partners, news and let's say, hey, we, we totally suck at doing it wrong. Can we squeeze in a paragraph about proposal workshop? And I'm quite positive we will get the chance. Well, okay. Because what well, in the end we are doing good for them. They they have their product is catalyst and they also want to succeed and have a successful proposal. I see no reason <laughs> for them, them to say no, no, no. What you're trying to make good proposals, you want to help proposals here, uh, get out of it. <laughs> that would be very damaging for a lot of us. Uh, nobody joins the workshop of users or material. So it's a risk, but yeah, we yeah basically this this is the marketing stuff. So we kind of addressed it. Is the main cause people find the templates overwhelming? So how do we mitigate this issue? Uh, live sessions. Uh, 
and guiding videos how to use templates. Like this one. Yeah, yeah. And oh yeah, like examples. Examples of how templates are used. So what happens if uh, we discourage writing proposals because too much is expected from a proposal? Help them to do it together in, in live workshops. Help them yep. do live workshops to do ideation together with others. Ah, and with others like, together and with others <laughs> they said uh, mirror board is a new tool for many and hard to use at the start how do we mitigate that again i guess it's same thing that we invite them and whoever is here they say a word i put it down <laughs> did you have that uh, mirror board guide I do, did have a mirror bar guide too, yeah. But then, yeah. And I guess the how to use templates it goes back to this. I'm gonna bring it closer this year so it's a bit messy, less messier. Okay, we don't control how well proposals are uh, delivered. What can we do about this? We we can control that, but we can control the hmm. we can send them an email. Hey. Taking us down with you. Do something. But we can't control it. <laughs> but, but what we can do. I guess what we can do is um, uh, have a, like a retrospective of how to improve, like, like, like what, analyze what went wrong. I was basically stay in contact with the proposers. So that's, I guess, the only thing we can do. And if we do, if we mitigate that risk, and that would just add a bit of um, extra cost to our proposal that we have a follow-up follow-up yep. um, meetings with proposers hmm. interesting and uh, analyzing how to plan future Proposals better that they could deliver. Um. Yeah, and it sometimes because like this exercise, it comes up with the risks, so they actually may just run into the risk like okay nobody joined the session we tried this we changed platform still nobody joined the session then we changed templates but all of these kind of delays they might actually still end the proposal but it go over time because they just keep failing and failing uh, all these attempts and and i don't think we i'm not sure can we like plan ahead so much so yeah i don't think that actually plan future proposals better is um 
is actually the right one. Um, I'm going to still leave it in because it was an addition, but I'm going to keep it white. So yeah, I guess follow-up meetings with proposer is the best like um, attempt to keep it on track or to have at least some kind of um, understanding what's the state of a proposal. Because even a failed proposal is successful in our book if they fail on time, <laughs> in a sense, if you understand what I mean. Mm. 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 Failed on time. Like, it's not like, um, let's say, there, there is a blocker in a way, uh, so nobody joins the workshop, and then they, they address that, that, hey, we have this issue, but nobody joined, and uh, this is what we're gonna do next, this is our execution plan, and it will delay the entire project. Um, but it's still kind of like addressed. And yeah, when it's and once they reach the end, they they can basically and if they fail like multiple times and they see like okay, this is they are running out of resources and we're not able to finish it then they at least own up to that, that they, we failed. They're going to do the closing report about how they failed, why they failed, all that stuff. And in that way, it's in our book, this is successfully failed because they, <laughs> they, they, they did what they said they will do, but what they didn't just worked out all the risks yeah. that they came up with were, were actually much larger than the expectations. And sometimes you just have to consider because market conditions or environment. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Successful fail. Oh, you will mitigate it. Okay, so the proposal doesn't fit under the challenge requirements. Uh, yeah, I guess the How to mitigate? <laughs> find the uh... find the right challenge. <laughs> find the grant program where it does fit. Um, if possible, change the uh, proposal plan. You asked something. I was, ask, I was asking, uh, do you change the mirror board uh, if the challenges change or? No. Because the idea here is that you write a proposal and then you will start looking, okay, where does this proposal fit? Is it the catalyst? Perhaps, maybe it's not, but it's, this exercise is more about actually finding a problem you want to solve and finding a way that the way that you want to solve it or your team and then just laying out the plan like how would you do that what would you need and then like the exercise of of writing a good proposal but yeah there is a, a huge danger that this that your proposal you're writing doesn't actually fit to the challenge so when you come so I guess the top notification coming to our proposal workshop is that <laughs> before you suggest your proposal or before you start with a problem, uh, make sure, and you want to do it on Catalyst, check all the challenges first there and um, make sure that whatever the idea is fits any of under these challenges. Else you will write yourself a very good proposal, but it just won't fit for the catalyst. <laughs> Mm -hmm. in, in in the current fund. Okay. And our last risk, it can miss questions you might need to ideate on specific projects. I, I guess that's an also an uh, iterative issue. Um, update. Templates. 
as new Christians uh, arise. Uh, I don't. I don't see other. <laughs> yep, that's a good one. Or like. Yeah, yeah, and we can update it as basically with these the cream ones. In case you are doing this kind of proposals, we found that you would have to answer these questions too. So go through these and whatever. Mm, that was great. Um, do we want to have proposal related sustainable development goals? Uh, select your categories. End poverty in all of its forms everywhere. I don't think we are working with poverty here. End hunger, achieve food, okay. ensure healthy lives, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education. Oh yes, we do. <laughs> ensure what? Ah, okay, I'll read out of here. Okay. Achieve gender equality. Empower all women and girls. Well, technically, we empower anybody, and the proposer can be a woman and a girl. <laughs> Do you think this fits? Uh, I better not comment on this. Oh, gender neutral answer. <laughs> okay. And will... I'm going to choose it so later we see what's the details of that. And durability of sustainable management of water. Okay, that's a far cry. Um, accessible energy, promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth for full and productive employment and decent work for all. Technically, no. Build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation. Well, well, I'm not sure is this in resilient infrastructure. Can we call these templates? In resilient it is we are promoting inclusive i don't know actually what it means by that yep what is the infrastructure infrastructure is usually like a underlying framework i'm but i'm wondering like what is it what is a resilient infrastructure like this is because we are building a social infrastructure here in a sense that we are having workshops where people can come and learn and it's inclusive and I don't know it's not really sustainable because we have to keep doing these grants and we don't really have a circular economy here um, but we are fostering innovation so it's like 50-50 I'm gonna pick it it's just so where we can go into details later reducing inequality within and among countries Uh, I don't know. Too big, I think. Make cities and human settlements. Oh, we cannot make cities for sure. Ensure sustainable consumption and production matters. I don't know. Maybe it feels like some kind of uh, factory yeah. stuff. Take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. Mm. Not really. I guess we are more general on education as well. Uh, life sustain, forest sustain, peaceful and inclusive society, sustainable to provide access to justice for all and build effective account inclusive institutions. And we're not institutions. Strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize re global partnerships. Yeah. Uh, next. Okay, so ensure inclusive, equitable, and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. And now we have options there. By 2030, what you crazy? This is one fund, six months. Let's not go into that. Ah, okay, so. Hmm, I wonder. Can we then? I, I guess we we still can select the fourth statement, but we we're not gonna be like a 
look into eight years in the future because we don't know how long we can run this sustainably. Build and upgrade education facilities. Uh, nope. Um, I'm going to skip all the huge long-term visions. Achieve gender equality. Okay, so what's here? End all forms of discriminations everywhere. I wonder, is it, can we consider that we don't know thing discriminate in our workshops? Does this count? <laughs> oh, man. Eliminate all forms of violence against all women. Eliminate all harmful practices such as child enforced marriage. Oh, man. Yeah, I, okay, I think this is something totally else. Uh, we, okay, way too, way too big. So how do I remove it back? <laughs> come, come away. Um, so nine. Build resident infrastructure. Okay, so what's under here? Develop quality, reliable, sustainable resident infrastructure, including regional transport and infrastructure. Uh, no, we are not. Technically, it is transporter because we are on blockchain. We are on Zoom to support the common development, human well-being, with the focus of affordable equitable access for all i'm gonna even choose that because it's affordable because it's paid by the community and it's cross-border okay. and it's we are we are making a social infrastructure with live workshops it, it's not like an again it's not sustainable and resilient okay so basically mm, that's i don't like the word sustainable and resilient infrastructure it's sustainable by the amount where we specify in the proposal for example six months or like how, however long this project is gonna be but it's not ongoing so maybe i can't really take it But yeah, people will get the idea like uh, where you want to go with this. Promote inclusive and sustainable. Okay, again, sustainable. I, I feel like this is not sustainable the way we work. <laughs> Increased access yeah. to small scale industrial and enterprises. Enhance scientific research. Upgrade technological capabilities, industrial sectors in all countries, particularly developing, including uh, okay. facilitated sustainable infrastructure, support domestic technology. Research and innovation and dialogue can include ensuring a conductive policy environment for inter alia industrial this okay, crazy. Okay, this is too Please. much. Oh, darn it. These are pretty big, pretty big scope things. Yep. But I could say we could pick four and nine, like ensure inclusive and critical quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Because we have an open source material, and as long as YouTube exists and doesn't delete our material, it's gonna be there and save for our for in case for videos. Yep. With resident infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable in industrialization. Okay, I didn't notice sustainable. Okay, so oh, damn it. Fine, let's remove the ninth. <laughs> I'm a bit skeptical about the sustainable because we are like a proposal, not the business. <laughs> yep. Um. Okay, so I did my steps. I thought there was an like a. Uh, I must okay. I must select something here. Okay. Okay. Select something. Then I get, uh, okay, then it goes even more deep. And I take this. And then I finish selection and then I get this. I didn't really, uh, I just realized I don't have a place for the output. So in future, I'm going to add uh, place where to paste it 
and describe how your proposal solution will address the challenge that you have submitted in. So let's quickly check in the um, project catalyst. Uh, no, we cannot check it from here because they do not upload the challenges. Online voting results. Yeah, challenge settings. <clears throat> so we have um, development infrastructure. Okay, I guess that's another thing we want to do. Uh, copy base piece. And request the data. Also the Maga board. Paste the statement, that's fine. Okay, actually, no. Paste the sticky notes, I like stickies more. And like this, this, get out of here, boom. Because these are our challenges <clears throat> we could choose from. I guess I'm going to make another uh, area here where the catalyst, I'm going to make it purple so I know. So what do we have? Development infrastructure. Well, we could say it's a social infrastructure. Startups and onboarding for students. Ah, we can use that one think and I don't know is actually is, is a social infrastructure something we can put here how can we support student blockchain starpass through catalyst and how can I create the number of student catalyst proposals and blockchain engine also basically it's something similar yeah it's, it's basically the same thing we got funded under so we can do it again but this time we can actually even increase the budget uh, and funny enough we, we were following the challenge setting rules and we put 5,000 but there are people who got funded more because nothing got filtered out so we do have a challenge setting just gonna look into can the social infrastructure also be what research tools or software uh, can improve the developer ecosystem or infrastructure to make it easier to build and scale on Cardano blockchain. Uh, yeah, okay, I understand. This is still a bit developers, but technically these proposals, these templates can be used to plan a technical proposal, like how to like what, what kind of apps you're going to do. And then you you say what apps you're going to build and how you, what is it going to do, who are the stakeholders. So it does fit there. Products and integrations. I think this is what products and integrations can be there to improve, will offer more use cases to kind of accept a high impact and try more adoption. It'll help because you reach potential help room systems, we use criteria, increase the number of products. <laughs> technically these workshops are a product and the workshops are the service the products are the templates increased number of products available for the community increased number of integrations that bring us new solutions together mm. Hardware, gaming, social media, transport, mediation, all that's legal. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are ways to do actually uh, twine it into products, but they're probably not the best case. Rather, a social infrastructure. Open source developer ecosystem. Can we build community owned open source ecosystem? Community commercially viable to drive growth, increase opportunities, and increase project visibility for the whole Cardano community. Yes, we can do stuff here, I guess. Increase the number of quality. Collaboration, it sure it does increase that. Okay, so we 
we can use this. Although it says dev workhorse system, but again, like we these templates can be used by developers to write good proposals or services they want to offer. SPO tools, I guess that is a total no go. Or and community projects. Okay, so that's another thing. How can we support effective, impactful projects and initiative to build and support the SPO ecosystem community? We yeah, have technically we can do it. <laughs> so, so I wonder, like we we could basically replicate this proposal under all of these challenges, but just changing the target audience to these specific uh, uh roles in these like developers and yep. So we could kind of run into the same thing we did last time. But the question is, who Please. needs our help the most? All of them. Building on NMaker. Okay, that's a totally different stuff. T rep improvement. Spear tools. I'm now. Yeah, basically, these three are the main challenge settings I will choose. Uh, either social infrastructure, uh, onboarding for students, because we are... This is more of an onboarding way. Like, if, if you are, yeah. already know how to write good proposals, then... Yep, I like there. that one. And then open source developer ecosystem itself. Yeah, I guess actually, yeah, we are not really dev focused because we don't have any technical questions like what kind of stack you're using, why explain why you're using this code uh, stack instead of this code, and like any of these detailed which uh, developers have to quite first have to like deal with. But it, yeah, yeah, it's like solution side. Now I guess we, we will address the startup onboarding the most in that case. And and if we take the startup, how can we support student blockchain startups through Catalyst? Uh, I'm going to copy paste the question. Challenge. Question. And answer. Describe how your proposed solution will address the challenge that you have submitted it in. And how do we address it? We provide students materials to get started with ideating on proposals for Catalyst and Cardano communities. With this, we conclude at chapter six, defining success. We ideated on outputs and outcomes, and we defined our success. We used these outcomes and outputs and as a starting point to uh, ideate on what kind of risks we have. And once we had risks, we added different solutions. How do we mitigate all of these risks? After that, we jumped into a sustainable development called tool to pick uh, and to see if there is uh, some big statements we could pick that, what we are doing. 
we had uh, one uh, HDG goal, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. We couldn't go quite to the detail, and so we uh, just fixed with a high level. And then we checked into Catalyst uh, challenge settings, what are coming up for Fund 10, and we chose a startup and onboarding uh, challenge setting for uh, uh, as our challenge. And we pro because we provide student, uh, students materials to get started with ideating on proposals for Catalyst and Cardano communities. In chapter seven, key performance and measurements. Okay, chapter seven, key performance measurements. In this chapter, we gonna go through different KPIs a proposal would have. There is an area we have where we have some examples of different uh, options, and then we list them into the table and go through the columns to describe where, why we need it, uh, what's the current situation with these measurements and uh, what to expect to achieve and how we will measure it. Uh, describe how Qatar is going to be able to audit the project progress. Category similar metrics if we're going to have a lot of them. Okay, metric category. Okay, first measurement name. So let's start from the top. Operational KPIs. Users who put work in. Um, do we want to have any KPIs of how many issues tasks are raised, how many hours been spent? Do we want to have operational KPIs? Are those users us or the proposers? These are us. But we could also hmm, results. I guess users are results on the results low. The user who are going to use the tool or service. So this is us. Hmm. Do we do we need KPIs that are that are related to us? Mm. In some instances, you would need, for example, uh, well, there used to be um, a requirement to measure how, what, what's the state of our proposal, but our, the KPI is like, okay, we're going to have X amount of users. We're going to have X amount of video views. We're going to have a good uh, X score on the proposal. But all that happens after we make the workshops and we get people invited in. But before happens is like we have to make uh, we have to make the workshop templates first <laughs> before we invite, we invite people and we, we have blank slate. So in order to show a progress, then there, there is an opportunity that hey, you just say that how many hours you've been working on your educational courses or administrative work or stuff. So that's it. We could use it, but do we want to use it? Because right now, I think we are not using it. We're just doing the things we need to do. Yep. Um, and now there is also this milestone stuff. Yeah, like we don't, we don't have to use it. So if you feel like I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't care either way. Yep. <laughs> because to me, it's easy to how oh, because that's how I operate. But I guess it's all harder to track for you and Carl, maybe. And it creates a, a like an extra overhead, but it, it but it does show the community at home. 
time is being spent there. <laughs> Something is happening. We don't really yeah. have tasks either, so we can't really say how much tasks are done or completed. Do we want to set an example for next proposal that we're going to do all of that? We're going to stage our work. Yeah, it would help for sure. OK, so you say that, do we use them both? How many hours has been spent? and? how many issues, tasks are raised and are completed. Do we add both of these in? Do, or we, just... even have the... Do we even have those numbers? <laughs> no, this is for the future proposal. So if, if we put it into proposals, then we're going to have to start tracking them, yeah. Hmm. Because we are making it the next proposal for future funds. And then I like... guess it. I guess it would make our bra make the proposal better. But shall we keep it simple then? How many issues tasks are raised? So every month we just say that hey, how many issues tasks are raised, and then. How many new issues tasks are raised? How many issues tasks are completed or cancelled? And perhaps we keep it separate or completed. And It doesn't give like, okay, we should, was it a small task? Maybe sometimes you can like complete 100 tasks by, because depending on how granular we go, but uh, it's still, uh, then people can go into and see, okay, what was, oh, you completed two tasks, what were they? And they can still see it in the progress report, what were they, but then they have like a measurement. Oh, and and if we keep honest and uh, not if, but we, in our case, then we, they, I, I probably they're going to see the flow of how to be work. Like, okay, one task per month. And when suddenly we have four tasks completed and they're like, okay, something changed there. Then they may perhaps check into actual results and see, oh, okay, these people are stepping up. But I wonder, is that really needed in in our case? I guess it's it's fine. We, we can have it. Yeah, then we can have white this later. Yeah, let's just ideate. Uh, next one, uh, revenue. What is the total cost of fees added to the treasury? How much ADA sent to donation wallet? And these are examples. Do we have any revenue? We actually don't have any revenue, so we can't really use that, I guess. Isn't funding revenue? Yeah. But it's like, it's expected revenue. It's like you, you always kind of get the amount because we requested the amount. We're going to get fully rewarded. So it doesn't really make sense, I guess. And we could show where our costs go, like our measurement of, uh, we measure how our wallet balance, basically. But again, like, I don't know, is it like why? It's a bit okay. It's it's audible. <laughs> Maybe that's why. But this doesn't really show like uh, how well the proposal is doing. It's just 
Majd is is azt mondja, hogy van lett. <coughs> process. How much time it passes between two different actions user makes? Do we have anything like that to measure? Um, uh, I don't understand. How much time passes? Okay, so basically it's, um, for example, we did it for the last uh, mini proposal workshop where once we did a live workshop, then we measured how many days it will take us to put the workshop, edit it, timestamp it, and put it into up public uh, YouTube. That's one example. Um, in, in our case, we could say uh, how much time it takes to complete the chapter. I, I guess that's an interesting, like right now we are actually taking time, how, like how long these chapters could take. And perhaps we could start using get this as a KPI and no, but we, we do it once, I know. In, in this case, we could, because now we do have the template, man, we just still gonna keep improving it. We probably if we get funded, we're gonna just keep expanding it. It's still gonna take more and more time. I'm gonna make new educational videos. So yeah, and, yeah, and if we use this challenge, this challenge I think we probably won't have funds to go and do it like every week, like new, new person. If if we would scale the amount of works we do, we could yeah, start measuring stuff, like how, how chapters take time, but I think right now it's not feasible. What you think? Hey, you, do you have any ideas under processes, like the way we manage this entire stuff? And if you want to measure any of any of these processes. Hmm. Okay. Then uh, capital. What is the total cost of fees added to the Cardano treasury? Yeah, we don't do any any transactional stuff. We are simple free service. Users who are going to use the tool. How many users returned after first use? Yeah, we cannot really measure that. How many users joined? Oh, but we can do is, since we're going to do a similar thing, we, we can check how many, yeah, how many users joined the live workshops. And then how many users uh, register to the live workshops? So there are two different things because people can register and then we're going to announce, okay, we're going to have selection between these topics and maybe some people are like, oh, okay, I'm probably not going to join. So I think these two things could be captured. How many transactions are created? Boring. How many users did not join? Uh, yeah, we don't. I guess that's that's like from register minus uh, live. These are not showing. Then user feedback rating. So these are users who are going to use the tool or service. And it's very hard to kind of measure who's using the templates itself. Yep. Unless they make, unless we make like a form that, hey, if you use this, drop the link in here, stuff like that, and let us know. Uh, Yeah, actually, actually, this we might actually want to do that. That we make a specific form that everybody 
who uses these templates, please sign up. Else you are not included in our, I don't know, support services in a sense. Because I think it would be unfair for us to kind of uh, kind of include them into our success metric if they are not registering themselves. Like they, they may use these resources, but if they are not up to listening or like up to uh, joining any of our or like asking information for us, we can't really guarantee that that they are going to be successful. So sh should we do it? Like um, a registration forum for those who don't really show up to live workshops, but who use any of the templates. And then we just have a forum where they explain, we used this template. And, uh, and then they share their proposal name. And then we have a list of those who actually follow through. And that's like an offline list. And then we have two different people. We have people who join in live workshops and then we have people who asynchronously follow the material and resources. But we at least know they are doing it. Yeah, it would give us more like impact, visible impact. So, so they have to uh, complete the, the registration first, then they can access the mirror board or? No, no, no. All of these are free, but in order for us to keep in touch with them and like uh, help them once they get funded, and um, well, we can still help them, but then like officially being part of the program and being part of our success metrics, they have to register into a forum that and saying that yes we are using your resources your your educational material to make our proposal and hopefully they even use our mirror board and then they add a link to their mirror board version because they can just copy paste this information and then user feedback rating how many percent of users give feedback uh, or functionality, how easy was the process? Do we want to measure feedback, basically? I say yes. Yep. But um, okay. But what is what is the question we're gonna measure? Mm. Did the workshop help them more, or, or how, the rating? <laughs> uh, rating one to four. How useful are the workshops? Are the live workshops? And uh, I'll give these. Yeah, these were what we wrote in our proposal. Yeah. yeah. I... Okay, what do you have the ability? What does success like? Okay, so yeah, we can come back to that. So how many proposals found value in workshop and created the proposal? How many of these proposals got a 3.8 score? I guess this time assessment score doesn't matter. It uh, was a red herring. Or not, maybe, it, maybe not. It doesn't matter? Yeah, I think this time we are not focusing on a score, but we are focusing how successfully they once they funded to they successfully deliver on a proposal. Hmm. So we we are the score is gonna be great. This is no doubt. We we already proved that uh, with with previous examples that when you go through this, you're gonna get a good score. Uh, 
now now we need to make sure that once you get funded you actually complete the proposal and what is all the elements you need there how many people show up for live workshops uh, that we have how many views on youtube do we want to include youtube views and stuff this time i don't i'm not sure this this has This has helped us to kind of trying to get our views up. We get the views up if we share videos, but then I guess mm, in one way it's good to have measure that then we're going to push for to have more results on that. Well, the views themselves aren't that important. It's rather the thing that how long do they watch for? When yeah, and now we have a bit different approach too because we are making now videos for each chapter, and it's not really about the full workshops themselves, but more of the content which can be used on a website and as a like a offline workshop material. How how long they watch it? So in YouTube, I'm just gonna go into YouTube, see a bit how does it uh, look like uh, content. So I, I think just... it was like user user retention rate or something. Mm. I just had a recap video. Let's see analytics. How well is it doing? Uh, uh, average percent viewed this. Mm, but another thing here that the problem is that it's like if one person clicks it, but like, oh, okay, it doesn't matter and removes it, it takes down the total average. So technically, we would want to filter out those who watch at least one minute of this. Like basically here we can see uh, <laughs> like everybody who watches more than one minute, how 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 long they watch it. So if they, they start the video and they already kind of get into it and they don't leave, are they gonna watch the full video? Like this is what we actually want to know because all these clickers, they are just messing with our data and we can't really can't really make yep. use of that. And I, I think that's another another like we cannot relative audience. What is that? Okay, but that's what's happening in 30 minutes. I don't know. Maybe it's a middle and that's people where they click. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't even know what does it mean, relative audience attention. It sounds like something good. <laughs> like a good metric, but how it's calculated. Mm, yeah, relative to what? I guess average percent viewed. But then again, that's like... Yeah. I don't know. But your idea was good about that. The ones who keep watching after the first minute. Yeah, but I don't think we can get this kind of information from YouTube. It's like very basic data. If you could kind of wonder, can we get some kind of advanced mode, like a table? It's like um, it per each viewer because yeah we need we need 
if it says 31 views, we need their retention per each person. And if that would be an accent, they will be called like export, export current view. What, what do you say to me? Let's see. What does it look like? Yeah, this is just one row. And that's just there were, view. There were more choices. Check out those choices. You mean exporting choices? No, uh, sort by or the views by. Can you change anything? Views by subscribers. Or more metrics. More metrics. Okay, you know. Watch time. But it's it's still like no, you gotta find something with this retention, retention, user retention. How long do they stay? Hmm, I don't see anything. Yeah, I think it still should be like average percent viewed, but we need we, with the key value cannot be project. We need it to be a viewer, per unique viewer, but we cannot. Like a filter by viewer. <laughs> Go to product more, subtitle video language, car type. Yeah, I think I uploaded it, but I didn't uh, launch it. That's why it's uh, weird. Mm. Impression, I don't even know what does that mean. So yeah, I think that this YouTube analytics doesn't give us anything because yeah, the because we don't have huge amount of views, so we can't really and we, we don't really have a massive amount of videos. We we can compare all of these videos we upload. Okay, this chapter is we, uh, we can measure like compared to other introduction videos we are doing, uh, like. This chapter compared to this chapter was viewed more than this one. And watch duration, average watch duration for this chapter was more than this one. We can kind of get this information. And then what is that insight? Is that saying that, oh, okay, people don't care about stakeholder network, but it's, it's needed. So it doesn't really change our fact that much. And and the detailed data we would actually need to to really drill down on on valid information we, we can't because we cannot filter views uh, of course like filtering views would skew it but in my view it's actually cleaning the data but we cannot do that so i would not trust youtube measures and they are just <laughs> like a wrong way to measure in, in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I will drop the, that stuff. Then how participants rate proposal workshop effectiveness after session one to five score rotating. Basically that's that. Um, yep. But uh, I would change it to one to four uh, because my latest uh, feedback stuff I realized um, oh uh, that's a good question how to participate rate how ready they might be the proposal for uh, for funding after all workshops and just one to four because then they don't have this middle ground like three and they always have to choose either a bit better or a bit worse, so then I can say, oh, three, um, average. <laughs> <laughs>
kind of forces them to pick a side. Uh, how yeah, participants, uh, how do participants rate how well was their feedback considered after the session with one? Uh, uh, yeah, how well was their feedback considered? One to five. Isn't isn't it like similar like the question one question before, like how was the workshop? Uh, well, it one is effectiveness, like how actually good these templates are. Another one is in the live workshop, if they say something and they suggest something, is the host, basically this is more of um, feedback to the host itself. Like, are we listening or are we just <laughs> dropping our information on them? <laughs> and yeah, I guess we can keep it in. It's like... It's easy to measure and it just increases credibility, I guess. And then it's, and it's, this is information I would want anyway. So why not, if I'm going to ask it, then because it's going to help me sustainable stuff that's not needed anymore. Ah, stay. Last time we did say by 2030, sustainable increase the number of youth adults who have relevant skills. <laughs> so we did, we did pick a goal that we, through these workshops, we can now make them professional. Um, any other ideas you think or, or metrics we should address? Oh, uh, do you think these are enough? So we do nothing with YouTube. I would say no. Well, we upload videos there, but we are not going to use use that our North Star of anything. Because the, the data is not well. We, we, we don't produce too much content to compare different content. And and we cannot check like filter the views. We just get the average. One person clicks views accidentally, and just the entire chart just gets worse. <laughs> okay, but I still don't understand the first three. Okay, so these first three are. So everything here uh, beyond the, when it starts the orange stuff, these are all the all the measures we can show people once we actually start the workshops. And all the operational stuff is the things we do before the workshop starts. So there is no workshops, but we still show progress reports to people that they, we created 10 new tasks uh and that's that's a measurement and then and if they want to know okay what are these the new tasks then we have open soft t work for example or a myro board where we write okay we're gonna make a template chapter 10 template improvement and we're gonna make a chapter 9 template improvement we're gonna add new chapter that's all of these are tasks or then we're gonna edit this video we're gonna make this video we we're gonna create this material to, to to market this information. Like all of the activities we take are, or yeah, whatever. These, these are the things we kind of, the actions we do, we measure them, how many of these. And if we complete or cancel them, then we also say, okay, we, last month we completed four tasks and it and that's that's the measure four tasks completed. If they want to go into detail, what were these four tasks? Then they can see. Okay, the two videos were done, one workshop was done, and uh, information was shared and published, announced or something. Do we also count the hours? We could. 
Um, yeah, that's a good point. Once we already do the tasks, why not already measure them? Because then we have like a, just a number to put there. Sure. Uh, let's put that there. Operational KPI, how many hours was spent so far? So this is a cumulative number. Ah, okay, okay. So the another question is how many hours were spent last month? How many hours were spent on on completed tasks? Then we only say how many hours were completed. Mm -hmm. And we could then also estimate, like we I did here, it's gonna take me like two hours per each to chapter and take it. And then later we can see, okay, this took two, to, I don't know, my estimations, I guess, doesn't matter. That is. Yeah, but that's but that's very interesting because we're gonna estimate hours and stuff in the, in the proposal delivery. And if we also bring it to the KPI, then the estimations are on proposals and the actual results are on the on the progress reports on the KPIs. Mm. And yeah, then then we okay, sure. How many hours were spent on completed tasks? I, I guess that's the the work. Okay. But I wonder how do we then track like project management? <laughs> because it's like ongoing stuff. And then I guess monthly basis. Yeah, I guess we can figure that out once we get funded. And then we can see. Keep adding the hours and yeah, more yes. hours and ask more money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna, not going to ask more money. We just you know, take more resources from the pot we got. Okay, we have hours in. Um, let's move on. So why this measurement? So operational, how many new issues tasks are raised? So why we... Okay, so why this measurement? Um, to show um, uh, how much work is planned in short term. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Do we want to show how many new tasks or issues are raised, or we only measure how many, if anything is getting completed, then we say, hey, four tasks were completed. But we could just say that four tasks were completed. Uh, you yeah. mean having only one of them? Yeah, just, just yeah, just saying, and not even cancelled. So yeah, even the cancelled stuff would, um, and no, no, cancelled have to be so because you could do a task and then realize that no, 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 this this is not the right way. We cannot do it differently. Um, yeah. I'm starting to think, I don't know, what you think, that we don't measure how many new tasks and issues are raised. Because this is just the ongoing stuff. Always there is something to do. 
uh, but what do we measure is once something is completed. So we are going to starting like a task based management. So even this meeting is like a task. And then once it's done, then we report it as X hour was spent on this. Because yeah, by, by this definition, or if it was canceled, then how many hours were spent on canceled task? And then we'd give a reason why it was canceled, basically. And then, but we don't say, okay, how many news came up and how many completed are, because you can, you can see, like, yeah, the, the amount of issues and tasks are arbitrary, but the hours cannot, the, this can be low or high, but the, it's still a, yeah, like a better measurement in a sense. Okay. So let's, <laughs> I'm already agreeing myself. Do you, do, did you follow me? <laughs> did you understand what I'm saying? We are gonna start counting the tasks. Exactly. That I'm saying actually opposite. <laughs> that we remove it, that we don't count the tasks because it doesn't really give any, uh, it doesn't have any, like, like, what does it mean to have 100 tasks compared to one task? You don't know, because one task could take 100 hours, but 100 tasks could take also 100, uh, one, 100 hours. Uh, but if you just compare time, like, you just say it, it took 10 hours to complete a task, it took us five hours to cancel a task, reason why. It gives you much better insight. We, we could even say it took us 25 hours to complete three tasks. Okay. Or, yeah, I guess we, with the total, so, but it, this gives you a bit of more measurement. Okay, okay oh, so, so basically they spent half of a week. And then we don't even talk about tasks. And basically, we go back to how many hours was being spent. And we can just say how many hours we spent. And if people trust us, then and then that's great. If not, then they will look more into detail. OK, what did you do? And if you don't provide it in progress reports, probably they will ask. And then we can say, hey, well, check our deal. Well, we're going to do it in open source. So. We do have links to say that two hours here, four hours here, six hours there, and who did what. And that is all, everybody can see it. Um, so yeah, I think that's a uh, makes more sense. And how many issues? Cancel, this doesn't matter. How many hours were spent on cancel tasks? So basically, this is just saying like every month that huh? this month, 12 hours were spent, this hour, 200 hours were spent. And then they'd be like, whoa, 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 what the hell happened? And then they click into it and see, okay, five different people were grinding like crazy. <laughs> okay, okay. Because having like one task or two tasks doesn't say anything because these tasks can vary from one hour to 500 hours. Yep. Okay, so how many hours spent on cancel tasks? Why this measurement? Um, to show uh, where time is spent. Both of these are to show where time is spent. <clears throat> Give me uh, an example of a cancel task. For example, we plan to do uh, chapter 11, a new chapter which doesn't exist yet. 
and we all think that oh that's a it's a great idea let's make a chapter like we had before let's add these chemical compound questions in and then i start i sit down i'm gonna draft something uh, some questions uh, for like let's say 30 minutes then i will have a team meeting we're gonna go over this and then we realize okay how do we validate how do we prove that these questions are valid then we're gonna get like a chemical person who actually knows their stuff getting in and they and he's like no it's not that easy you have to consider this this and this and this too and we be like oh my god this went too hard okay let's 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 cancel this we cannot make this chapter because it's it's in in an idea that was a great but in actually making it something which is useful to users what we can teach it's not feasible in so we cancel it but time was spent i spent one hour to drafting it we, we had three yeah. people in the team spending time so it's like and then we even had in the quest but i guess the time sp <laughs> that's a good question how many hours were spent on completed tasks by the team So that all the guests and all the visitors or the proposers who join the live workshops, we don't count their hours, we only count our hours. Um, so current uh, situation. I guess zero. <laughs> we do spend time. And this is the yellow one. So that's a starting hour. Um, I guess the current situation would be yeah. We we technically have a current situation. We could use our current workload and if Three I hours. yeah for you uh last week yes it was three uh, plus two so five last week I did five I guess or six then then week before was two, then three weeks before was two. This perhaps two. Uh, four weeks ago, on day one. So one, two, 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 five, so average 11 hours for me but then i don't know how much kawa has spent i'm probably two three hours if he and if he joins then it's even more so again like six for you you have joined all the these ones so also six i guess four to six so average five and if you all count it up it's like oh five like 20 let's say yeah it's hard to say because we don't count hours that's the that's the thing but uh, team total Oh, but uh, we don't, I don't know, we haven't cancelled anything yet. <laughs> so, Are you sure? Happy. We, we only have added. <laughs> we are like, oh, okay, we, we need to just add a three hours more work because of this meeting. But... Um, I'm not sure we have cancelled anything. 
Maybe, maybe I'm missing something. And the expected situation, yeah. I, I, I don't think we want to cancel, <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is a pretty good. Actually, it should be less. Uh, I, and it actually could be more because you're now editing videos also. So, 28. Oh, no, that's section more. Oh, yeah, it's it's hard to measure because like, we, yeah, we just come up with a number and because we are not counting hours. <laughs> Everybody in, in like a aggregated place. I'm just like looking at my calendar and <laughs> pulling numbers out of here. And uh, team spends, but what do we expect? I guess that's pretty good. Like every person spending four hours per week uh, to eight. Uh, now then we don't even have to do it every week. So <laughs> that's that's only the high, only these workshop uh, weeks are crazy. Rest of the months are kind of <clears throat> easier. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, pretty hard. Pretty hard. But uh, let's still say eight uh, 16 times two, I guess. So I guess at the, at the tenth moment, 33 hours. Okay, we have four hours per week is maybe too crazy. So let's take it 25% down. Oh my God. Yeah, I guess, yeah, 25. I, 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 I feel like our current tempo is pretty good, so let's keep it around there. And uh, how will you measure um, using the work and adding hours on each task? Each in, uh, adding actual hours to each completed task. Both are saying, when will you start reporting on this project progress? How long you share this measurement? When will you stop sharing this project measurement? <clears throat> Starting sharing from the start of the project until the end of the project. It's a pity. Simple one. So users who are going to use this tool or service. So now these are three ones. How many users register to live workshops? Uh, why, why these measurements? To measure the interest for these workshops. Yeah. How many how many users join the live workshops? I guess the same reason, right? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> how many users registered to claim using these resources? Um, <clears throat> no. How many users? Use the templates. Um, user feedback rating. I uh, want to know how useful are the live workshops. So these are to know, to measure how well our workshops go. How how do participants rate how ready might the proposals funding? Yeah, basically the same thing. How, how well you should go. How do participants rate how well was their feedback? How, how workshops are facilitated? It's 
current situation. So what's our current situation? How many users registered to live workshops? Don't know. We, we didn't really never have any anything like this. Or TV, I don't remember. We did have one person. I mean, current situation compared to the last, this hasn't even started yet. Like the last time we, we had a lot of people. Uh, if I go back, 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 mini proposal workshops. And use this, use this. <clears throat> oh, you mean the last ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These test ones, yeah, we could somewhat say that no, nobody wanted to join the test, basically, except one person. <laughs> but it's it's not like we we we're also where oh no no these are not ones these are where the money is going. Uh, poof, poof, poof. See, it's great that we have um, everything open source. So if I show where money is moving, everybody's like, yeah, it's okay. Do you remember where do we put our uh, results? Things to update and track. Okay, that sounds like something to update and track. Yes, yes. Uh, average people in sessions. Uh, so basically seven people. That's crazy. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we don't know how many would have registered, but we know that seven people. Uh, how many users use the templates? Uh, yeah, we don't know. Well, I would actually say we know, zero. <laughs> we don't know because again, it, it comes back to this situation when um, six months later, when I did my first proposal, mini proposal workshops, everything is completely done and well. And then uh, I went one of the events uh, related to Catalyst and then somebody came up, oh, you, hello, hello, I use your templates. Very, thank you very much. I'm like, what, why didn't you say? I've been <laughs> struggling to know if are they useful or not. <laughs> okay, okay. So, but yeah. This this could then help us to kind of perhaps measure a bit more. Um, and maybe we could use website to to track how many visitors are on the website. So we will see. And this needs some a bit more discussion with the uh, with the Cutter School team if that's possible to measure. Um, actually, that's a good idea. I'm gonna write it down. Check if we catalyst school team if we can measure how many people uh, go through the workshops. But they are there. Uh, yeah, Okay, to measure how well our workshops go, I think we didn't do any of the feedback reports in, in any of our sessions. Yeah. Don't know, don't know, don't know, don't know. Then expected situation. Uh, what? How many we expect to register? I think always a bit more, well, let's say 15. Um, how many will join? I don't know. Well, we have a, a different format this time because we only take one proposal and then we have so many sessions. So I think at, at less like four. I think that's a great if we have that many because probably they're gonna like dilute in the way and only the team who is actually wants to complete the proposal will stay until the end. And I'm not sure how big the team will be. I'm gonna 
keep it simple. Yeah, we should. <laughs> the best counter would be who stays till the end. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how many user eggs to claim using the resources? Well, I would want to get like a more here, 20 or so. I don't know how many are so actively trying to make perfect proposals. But um, <clears throat> that's, 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 yeah. I'm saying it more because like web live workshops maybe are exhausting for some, but like uh, offline content in their own pace perhaps has some merit. And ratings, uh, uh, I think four. I like let's go with the maximum. How how well workshops? How to, yeah, uh, yeah. All of these, I would like. Let's go max. I I've been doing it this for a while. Let's go for max score. <laughs> okay, how will you measure? Okay, how do we measure it? So. Measure the interest of workshops. So Google form, uh, registration Google form, uh, number of people in live workshops. Oh no, I clicked the button. Oh, nothing happened. Good. And to know how many users use the templates. Uh, again, registration, Google form. Uh, to measure how well our workshops grow and session feedback, Google form. All of these three. Anything you want to add? Nope. And finally, when will you start reporting on this progress report? How long you share the measurements? And when will you stop sharing it? Uh, so uh, start collecting after after new resources are ready. <clears throat> Uh, we collect for two weeks and that basically that's the stop also and we thinking and same for uh, we start start counting from since first live workshop uh, and until to the last workshop <clears throat> and considering the space, I guess it's, yeah, we, to us it took three weeks to actually do it. So maybe even four weeks. So let's say four more weeks four week period because it looks like um, we cannot do it in three weeks as uh, initially expected unless we change some stuff up registration google form uh, what are these to know how many users use the templates now oh, so start collecting after new resources are ready and then until the end of project. So if there are everything is done, we still have it open until the closing report. Uh, how to measure how well workshops go? <clears throat> and we start again from each workshop until the last workshop. And this is a four week period. Done. So. How do you feel? Am I missing something? Mm, you're faster than me, so. 
Mám na to polovně. Já. Yeah. I, I, I guess. I guess we have more extent. Yeah, basically I was uh, going through when you will start reporting. So like, when do we start? All of the like, collecting these measurements, when do we end and how long we do it? And expectation is that we're gonna finish all the workshops in four weeks. So uh, once per week and in four weeks we complete entire this all the sessions each time we take these measurements <clears throat> and also we then count the number of people in the directions and for oh, the rest so you mean uh, four weeks per one proposal and uh, no 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 we have only one proposal oh yeah that's uh, that's another thing um we Uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. How how many sessions we do? Yeah, that's one proposal is four weeks. If we want to do more proposals, it still can be four weeks. We can do parallel. We can have like morning session, later session, different days. Yeah, that's that's the scaling and um, solution. And and we should have to define that in a solution section how many workshops we can actually do. And we could actually measure how many workshops we can do. Uh, but yeah, yeah, right now I go, went with the assumption to go with one, like one workshop. And then once uh, next day, we can check in chapter then when we uh, do the proposal costing and delivering schedule, then we can check how many proposals we could actually I have a live workshops for like from start to finish to, to fit to the budget of a challenge setting. Mm. But all right, I actually have um, an interview in 10 minutes <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice. So I'm going to conclude it fast and, um, and keep it up like that. Okay. Um, we finished chapter seven, key performance uh, measurements. Uh, we used the template here to, to start our um, thinking process of uh, what kind of measures we're going to use. We, we went through some uh, YouTube stuff, uh, some other areas, what we could measure. And uh, we stick with um, um, three different uh, metrics, so metric categories. So operational KPIs, how much time we gonna uh, is going to spend, or how, how, how much time this proposal is actually going to take, so people have some kind of understanding of who cadence uh, who who follow us. Then users who are going to use the tool or service, for example, how many people join. Uh, how many people choose the templates, how many register, and then some user feedback rating. So once we have the live workshops, we get some live feedback and uh, and we rate that like from one to four. Uh, of course, expecting maximum results in his uh, situations. Uh, <clears throat> and then, yeah, comparing it to current situation and expected uh, situation, uh, the tool we are going to use to measure this, basically Google Forms um, and simple counting of live people people in the live workshops. And our operational KPIs, we're most likely going to use Tvork. And finally, we also included when we will start reporting, when we will stop it, and how long it will last. So it's uh, clear to understand when this uh, uh, metrics are used in progress reports. Yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> With this, I conclude our chapter seven. <laughs>